Hello, hello everybody. This is Apostle Aqualand coming you coming to you from the sunny state of Southern California in the United States. I pray that this message and uh, this topic will help you in ways that you might not expect. <clears throat> Uh, so just to give you a little bit of uh, an introduction about myself, uh, like I said, I'm an apostle. I have a ministry. Its uh, name is Yahweh's Light Ministries. Um, I'm honored and blessed to be here with uh, Pastor Sam uh, here on uh, Rafa Blessing Ministries. Uh, he is such a delightful person and uh, a great man of God. Uh, it's been a while, a long while since I've been here. Uh, but uh, I'm just honored to be here, to be able to share the Word of God once again. And uh, it's just a privilege. So um, it's always amazing uh, and honor to, sh to co-labor with like-minded Christians uh, in today's world. So I, um, I've been really busy working in the kingdom uh, in order to help uh, others uh, in their in their work in their ministries and one of the things that I find that excuse me I'm just gonna get a drink here one of the things that I find very common uh, especially and uh, what's going on today and it is and it is so profoundly pro prolific and that is fear. It has just jumped with leaps and bounds. And I don't uh, have to go into a lot of detail about why or how, but I will. Uh, <clears throat> COVID, um, personal fears about, you know, my family. My job and it's so many other things so my overview uh, for the for this topic is you know we we all we all have fears I have fears you the pastor uh, the doctor down the street the attorneys even the our presidents and prime ministers and governments they we all suffer fear there's only one that didn't uh, and that's Christ Jesus and he gave us great examples of how not to right the effects of our society and our personal and our self-imposed fears in today's world can can be overwhelming and seemingly insurmountable right and it comes at us in many different directions. It bombards us, right? Our own fears, those imposed by our bosses. Or let me throw a twist at you. How about the fears that we get from the Bible, right? causes us fear. How can that be? How can, can you think of how the Bible can cause us fear? A lot of times off the, just off the cuff, just off the top of our head, we might think, well, the Bible can be comforting. But when we hear, thou shalt not, well, how am I going to follow that to the T? Because if you're like me, who can at times be legalistic and the black and white thinking, it can cause some fear, right? Or if you hear the story of Ananias and his wife, it's like, <gasps> ooh. So if I lie, you know, it can cause fear because we've all lied, right? cause fear in us. 
because we're not perfect. And for somebody who doesn't know the Lord, they feel that judgment and condemnation and that creates an internal conflict and thus causing fear. So I'm just giving you an overview, an example of all the different types of fears that we suffer in our lives. But let's go a little deeper because I'm really one to get down to the depths and the root of how our fears can grab us, can just choke us down. Because I want to show you this and I, and, and I don't want this to be doom and gloom. So just hold on. I just want you to bear with me because there is light. COVID. Mm. COVID. I'm only going to go there because of personal experience, but we have all been there. Number one, the fear that the governments have imposed. Wear a mask. Stay home. Don't go to work. So that right there imposes strict fear on us. We're being controlled. Fear of death. Fear of getting it. Fear, 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 fear. Giving a personal testimony of how that affected my life and impacted. Last December, I caught it. My husband caught it. And that was the second time we both caught it. My husband got double pneumonia. 72 years old. Severe cardiovascular disease. Yeah, I was terrified. But what did I do with that fear? How did I handle it? I cried out to him. We're both alive, obviously. I'm, I'm alive, of course. Yeah. Um, so is my husband. God saw us through. But how did I do it? That's the key. How? How? If you're sitting here wondering, well, yeah, how? I'm still afraid. I still am not working. I'm still wondering how I'm going to get fed. How? How do I let go of this and release the power of God in my life so that he can move? Because there's a way to deal with it and allow God to work. Because if we don't deal with it and we choke it up, God can't work. There's a way. So let me give you an example of in the Bible that was pretty huge. God did a miracle. The story of Lazarus in John chapter 11. Mary and Lazarus send word to Jesus. The one you love, <laughs> the one you love is sick. Come, come. Jesus doesn't come. He tarries where he's at for another two days. And don't you think that Martha and Mary were terrified? They were, I can't think, you can't help but know that they were scared. Their brother, who's sick, Jesus come, and he's not coming, and he's like, where is God? Where is he? You know, and he's like, <gasps> of course they're scared. And then he dies. Now, they're not only scared, but they're mad, probably. Most likely, come on, they're humans, right? If you would have just come, now he's dead, four days in the... Right? Right? Mm. Who hasn't done that? I know I have. <laughs> right? Sure, a few of you out there have done the same thing. God, where are you? Where are you? Come on, God, where are you? He's there. He's right there beside you.
but we know how it ends. And Christ Jesus gave everyone then and everyone in the world, he preserved, it's not just a story, he preserved what he did for the world to know, not to just see, but to know, to internalize it and to practice it out in our lives. Because what Martha and Mary did, they came out to him crying. They cried out to him. They cried out. They got, yeah, they got upset. If you had only come, they cried out to him. And when he wept, he didn't weep because Lazarus has died. No. He wept because of their unbelief. He wept because of their unbelief. What are you going to believe today? Are you going to believe that he's sitting on the throne? And he's seating for you? Right? What are you going to believe? Are you going to believe what mankind says today? Or are you going to believe that you've got the freedom in Jesus Christ who died for you on that cross? Right? How do you overcome fear? Oh, let's talk about another one. Finances. Oh, did I go there? Yeah, finances. Money. You're sitting at home because of COVID. You're locked down. You can't go out and work and feed your family. Your kids might be hungry. Can't pay your bills. Yeah, this is real stuff, guys. Real stuff. So how does it work? They're called miracles. They're called trusting God for everything. So I have more examples in my life that are real. <laughs> yeah, he does these things. I have four children. My first husband, well, he committed suicide. I'm left with nothing. No income. Nothing. But God provided an income without me having to work because I'm really, <laughs> I'm like really, I'm like distraught. I'm so distraught in life that I couldn't do anything. But God provided. And I had no means to even get a vehicle. I didn't have the credit. And here in America, we buy things a lot of times on credit and you have credit scores. And my credit score was like really low. But God saw fit to allow me to be able to buy a car on credit. But when they sold me the car, the car hardly any gas on it. And I had four children with me and I'm on the freeway when I realized it. So I'm like, okay, God, you're going to have to help me get home because I didn't have enough gas in the car to get home. And I trusted him and my kids, they prayed too. Guess what happened? I went from empty to a quarter of a tank right before my eyes. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No kidding. He provided. He provided. There were so many times people showed up with groceries just because we prayed. I'm not lying. As God is my witness, this happened over and over and over. Money ended up in my checking account out of the blue and just the amount that I would need. Over and over, it happened. And the same thing can happen for you. But there's some prerequisites. Not hard ones, but there are some. So what are they? You have to be a Christian first. You gotta have a relationship. That's easy to do. 
you got to believe that he died for you and rose on the third day. You got to say, sorry, Lord. Forgive me for what I've done. I'll stop trying to do it my way and start trusting you and have faith. And believe that he died for you. And give your heart and your life over to him. And there you go. That's it. You will no longer be going to hell. You'll be going to heaven. You say that prayer and mean it from your heart. So that way you'll start this relationship and then you have faith. You have faith. Start reading the Bible. Start reading the New Testament of what Jesus Christ did for people. If you raise somebody from dead, don't you think he'll help you live? <laughs> Come on. Yes, he does. Oh, yeah. So, if he gives you life, the Bible says that he knew you from the this, is what the, this is what the Bible says. I'm not saying this. The Bible says this. If he created you from the foundation of the earth. This is before the planet was even created, guys. If he created this, created you before the foundation of the earth. And he knitted you in your mother's womb. And then he drops you off. That's it. You're done. Did he really do that? No. He's going to take care of you all the days of your life if you let him. But you have to trust him. You have to have that faith. There's a saying, fully rely on God. What we call frogging. I'm going to frog it today because I'm going to fully rely on God. Frog. So finances. Let's take it to the Bible. The step out in faith in the word. So in Psalms 139, verse 16, it says, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days are ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. <gasps> it's right there. Go read it. Psalms 139.16. Go look at it. Your eyes saw my unformed body all day. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. He already knew. He's like, boom, I'm going to write it out. This is in, in Ephesians. Ephesians 2.10. Let's go there. Ephesians. Let's go right here. Ephesians 2. 10, it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before we should walk before we should walk in them. So tell me, is he gonna take care of us or not? Of course he is. So we should take that to the bank, right? Take it to the bank. I know I have. So when others, people, places, or things, things we can't control, start to think they have control, because that's all it is, are you going to let them, are you going to allow them to cause us fear? Or are we going to allow God of the universe who created us, who loves us, who knows us, who's molded us, who's set every day of our lives in a book that says, I'm going to take care of you. I am the good shepherd. I'm the one who loves you. 
I am the bride of Christ who's going to come back for us. I don't know about you, but that really soothes my soul. It really does. I don't, and I can say this with every fiber of my being, people, I don't fear. There may be instances like when my husband and I got COVID. I didn't have any fear at all for me. I feared the death of my husband because, of course, that's kind of, yeah. But it's what you do with it. It's how you deal with it. Whose report are you going to believe? Whether it's having a little fear or what we see as a huge fear, it doesn't really matter. We're believing a report that does not belong to us. Right? Are we going to believe what the Word of God tells us? That choice is yours today. Do you know how many times Fear not appears in the Bible. 365 times. I know that wasn't a mistake. It's not a mistake. So here are some practical tips on overcoming fear. Number one, find a Bible verse that tells you who you are in Christ. For example, I am a child of God. Or I am created for good works. I am a soldier in Christ. That's number one. Identity has a lot to do with it. Knowing who we are in Christ has a lot to do with it. <clears throat> Another one is, number two, not necessarily in this order, making sure you're right with Christ. If you're not saved, get saved. You're going to go anywhere, do anything, unless that's right. And if you keep falling into sin, stop it. We have a choice. Okay. Number two. Ephesians 4, 8. Memorize it, get it in on the heart, get it inside of your heart. Oh, excuse me, Philippians 4, 8. What we think about all day is what's going to run our lives. So in Philippians 4, 8, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever, this is from uh, the New King James, uh, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, and whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, whatever are, are good report. If in if there is any virtue, if the, if there is any praiseworthy, meditate on these. So what you dwell on here, it's going to make a huge impact on how you handle life's ups and downs. Because what you put inside here is what's going to come back out. What you put in your ear gate, your eye gate, your mouth gate, how you speak to yourself, your inner talk, 
So you the relationship with Christ, what you're thinking about, and your identity and who you are, all of this word getting inside of you is going to help you overcome and be an overcomer. It's going to set you apart. It's going to cause, you know, it's, it's all a part of sanctification. Okay. And then, for spiritual warfare, very second you get saved, you walk into a battle. We may not understand, we may not even know it, but it happens. Because we now become an enemy of Satan. Spiritual warfare, people see it as, ooh, <laughs> ah, no. But it's not our battle. It's his. Our responsibility is in Ephesians 6, 10 through 19. That's our responsibility. Is to put on the armor of God and to stand. And to understand that we do not, I repeat, we do not fight against flesh and blood. Let me say that again. We do not fight against flesh and blood. And there is no reason to fear in it, the enemy, Satan, demons. There's no reason. And here's why there's no reason to fear that. Because when Christ died on the cross, what did he do? He went down to Hades and took the keys back and overcame them. And we as Christians are covered in the blood of the Lamb. And we are protected. As long as we do not allow Satan to come in through our own sin, then it we have no issue. We have no problem. But we have our part. If we don't let in darkness, Satan doesn't have a foothold. Therefore, we won't have fear. Okay. I'm keeping it real. If I didn't tell you the truth, then I answer to God. So, salvation, pick out an I am verse, I am a child of God, I am saved, sanctified, set apart, I am a royal priesthood, one of those verses. If you're sinning, stop, because you'll let in the enemy. There's no reason to fear. If you've got your side of the street clean. Because you're covered. Relationship, relationship, relationship. Right? And then to always keep in mind. That this is a spiritual battle. It's not a battle between mankind. It's not. So when we look into the Word of God, They're not just stories. They're real events that happen. Christ, he was always there. He clothed the flowers of the field. Why wouldn't he clothe you? He fed the birds and he still feeds the birds of the air. Why won't he feed you? 
He's known you before the foundations of the earth. He's not going to drop you off just because COVID came around. He'll take care of you even more so. So don't believe the report of mankind. This is not a battle between man or your boss. It's a spiritual battle. Trust in the Lord who saved you. Okay. I will pray that you have been blessed by this. I know I have. And I hope I'm not the only one that preached myself happy. <laughs> okay. I pray that this has really blessed you. So I will be back at the same time, same place, 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time in the United States. Uh, and I will talk to you again next week. God bless you all. Have an amazing week. Take good care of yourselves. Bye.